Hi, my name is Rahul Arora, and I'm a PhD student at the University of Toronto. I'm going to talk about mid-air drawing of curves on surfaces in virtual reality. This work is in collaboration with my advisor, Karan Singh. Okay, so this paper is about creating curves onto surfaces. This is a fundamental interaction for multiple computer graphics applications. The most common use cases are artistic, for painting colors, bump maps, etc. onto a texture. But there are other applications for semantic purposes, such as region selection and interactive segmentations, and applications in geometry processing, including drawing seams for parameterization and guiding algorithms for vector field design, registration, etc. Let's start with the artistic application of painting colors. The most common way to achieve this today is via 2D interfaces on a desktop. Users of tools such as Blender and Substance Painter would either paint on an image that is a 2D domain, which is mapped onto the surface via a texture atlas, or otherwise they would directly paint on the surface in a what you see is what you get manner. This is more intuitive for the user, so let's focus on this method. Let me illustrate it here. You draw with a pen on a, a tablet or using a mouse. A ray is then cast in the view direction and its first point of intersection with the surface defines a point for the curve. As the user continues to move their mouse or pen, every sample generates a ray which intersects with the surface. For many applications, just this sequence of points is enough. But if you actually want the curve, you could join consecutive points using straight as geodesics on the surface and get a curve. But you can run into some challenges when drawing such curves. The first problem is that you can cross the contour, which either abruptly ends the stroke or leads to a sudden jump or discontinuity. The view direction ray casting approach also makes drawing on thin features very difficult. And if you want to draw a complex curve, you may need to change the viewpoint multiple times, change the view direction, zoom in or out, etc. Okay, so the question we asked is how can you do better in virtual reality using a three-dimensional interaction and visualization space instead of a 2D space? Can we make this task easier? Um, the first benefit of VR is that the user can reach out and approach the target surface itself. So one way to draw the curve would be to keep a VR controller exactly on the surface. Obviously, this is very difficult even for simple surfaces since we don't have a physical constraint which helps us be on the surface. So instead of making this interaction easier, we've actually made the problem worse. So what if we go back to the view direction technique as in 2D? In 3D, this would mean we cast a ray in the direction from the user's eye to the controller. But unfortunately, while such view-centric projection is natural to use in 2D, it doesn't make a lot of sense in 3D. For instance, if we want to draw on the side of this object, we move the controller and look in that direction, but now we can't see the region we are drawing on very well. If we want to see it properly, we have to physically move our head a lot as well, which can be tiring, awkward, and difficult to control precisely. And if we are situated here but want to draw on an occluded region, there is no natural way to do it other than a massive physical movement. Okay, so let's go back to reaching out and drawing on the surface. I earlier said that staying precisely on a surface is difficult, but that's easy to fix. We can just project each 3D point to its closest point on the surface. Unfortunately, closest point projection is not smooth and results in extremely jumpy behavior, so this is not intuitive at all. Actually, some commercial tools in VR already allow painting onto objects. They use a simple technique which goes as follows. Imagine that your controller acts as a can of spray paint. That is, define a ray casting direction as some fixed direction in the controller's local coordinate system. Now, you can squirt paint out of the nozzle and use all six degrees of freedom, three for translation and three for rotation, to manipulate this spray can. But this also has some obvious problems. If you are far from the surface, rotating your controller slightly can change the projected point a lot. 
if you try to stay very close to the surface to try to be more precise, you can accidentally go through it and then you're suddenly drawing behind the surface. So now we're dealing with six degrees of freedom and slight changes in the position or the rotation can change the projection drastically. And that's not good. Before moving forward with our novel solutions, let me just formalize the problem we're solving a little bit. So we have a manifold triangle mesh M embedded in 3D space, and we are trying to draw on it. We have a set of points P0, P1, and so on in R3. These are the positions of the controller as sampled by the tracking system. For each point, we want to find a projected point on the mesh. So for P0, we have Q0, for Q1, uh, we have Q1 for P1, and so on. One thing to note is that we want this projection to be real time. That is, for projecting the point PI to find QI, we don't want to wait for the next point. The big issue with all the techniques as looked at so far is that all these projections are functions of the current system state, which includes the current positions and orientations of the controller and the head. And I described a few such techniques, spray can, closest point, and view centric. But so far, we have not arrived at a method which feels natural for VR curve creation. So what are we missing here? One thing to note is that we're only using the current state of the system, and that means we are ignoring all historical states which can provide additional context. What if our projection could depend on old system states, as well as the already projected points? Um, what can we do with it? We're going to call such projection functions context-sensitive projections, and I will start describing them now. The projections described so far do not use any history, and we are going to call them context-free projections. Okay, so let's talk about context-sensitive projections. In our paper, we look at projections which use the minimal historical context, that is, just the most recently projected point. One small but nagging question you might have right now is what do you do for the first point of a stroke when there is no historical context? And the answer is we can use any context-free approach. We found spray can to be the best one of those, so that's what we use for the first point of each stroke before our novel context-sensitive projection takes over. I'll now describe our new approach to this curve, our drawing problem, stroke mimicry. The idea is very simple and intuitive. We conducted a lot of pilot trials and we observed this fairly persistent notion of mimicry. That is, if P is the stroke executed in 3D and Q is the projected curve that the user desires, then the users would mimic the shape of Q in their 3D stroke P. So given P, we want to solve for a Q which looks similar to it. And if we look at this locally, say when we have solved for qi minus 1, and now we want to find qi, we just want the vector difference between the two to match the difference between pi and pi minus 1. Okay, so how can we do this? Let's look at a picture. Here we have already projected pi minus 1 to get qi minus 1, and now we want to find qi. For this, we look at this vector delta p, and add it to qi minus one to get the anchored point ri. Notice that delta p is short. Typically, uh, its length is around a couple of millimeters or less. And the reason is that delta p is the difference between the consecutive controller position samples returned by the tracking system, which works at 50 hertz or more in modern VR hardware. In turn, this means that ri is very close to the surface m, so here we can simply use the point on M that is closest to Ri, and that defines Qi. Now we only need to control three degrees of freedom. Notice that the orientation of the controller is not utilized at all. So this is much easier for the user, and stroke mimicry is an intuitive tendency. Um, further, even any or motion orthogonal to the surface is effectively ignored, so we're truly only requiring control of two degrees of freedom at a time, for a task that is locally two-dimensional. So that's great. Now this projection works. It doesn't have the problems that spray can and other context-free projection have. But one problem that still exists is that the closest point projection itself has a discontinuous behavior for triangle meshes. 
Of course, closest point function is discontinuous for smooth surfaces as well. But by only dealing with points which are very close to the surface, like our anchor point R, we have dealt with that problem. But for triangle meshes, there's this additional discontinuity problem that shows up even when close to the surface. To be more precise, we assume that the triangle mesh is approximating a smooth surface, and we want our closest point projection to behave like it would for the smooth surface. Unfortunately, for triangle meshes, closest point has a tendency to snap onto vertices and edges. So this point projects here, this one also projects here, and this third one as well. In contrast, if we actually had access to the smooth surface, our closest point projection would be a little more smooth. And here's why this happens. For a smooth surface, the closest point projection is an orthogonal projection. That is, the line joining the input 3D point to its closest point on the surface is orthogonal to the surface. This is no longer true for discrete representations such as triangle meshes. Um, so how can we approximate this projection when we only have access to a triangle mesh? To do this, we extend Panuzzo and colleagues' Fong projection from 2013. So what they do is, instead of thinking of a triangle as flat with a constant normal, they compute an interpolated normal field across triangles and use it to compute an orthogonal projection. So for a given point R in a triangle, we want to solve for the barycentric coordinates psi1, psi2, psi3, such that the interpolated normal at this point is aligned with the line joining the point to R. Additionally, we tetrahedralize the region around the mesh and embed it in a higher dimensional space. This tries to flatten the surface M, which helps improve the projection even further. As we get an input 3D point R, we compute its intrinsic location in the 3D shell, that is the tetrahedron it belongs to, and the barycentric coordinates within that tet. We then use this uh, intrinsic location to find its extrinsic position in the higher dimensional embedding. And then we compute an orthogonal projection onto M. And now we use the intrinsic coordinates on M to bring this point back into the 3D space thus getting our projection. This three-step sequence is encapsulated into an operation which we call smooth closest point since it approximates the closest point projection on a smooth surface. This can just be dropped in in place of the standard closest point for triangle meshes. Now I'll talk a bit about the applications of this technique. Uh, first I'll show a curve gallery. These curves would be incredibly difficult and some even impossible to perform with the context-free techniques. But with stroke mimicry, you can easily draw such complex curves. Curves that loop around the geometry multiple times. Or even if the geometry has a lot of noisy details which are hard to mimic precisely. Of course, stroke mimicry can be used to paint textures, and here are a couple of results. You can see the painting in action for the Spider-Man bust. Such curves can also be used for part selection or interactive segmentation. And finally, we can use curves on surfaces to guide geometry processing applications. Here are some examples of vector field design using the algorithm of Fisher and colleagues. As you can see, drawing curves on surfaces is a fundamental interaction which can help with many different applications. Once we had the technique, we tested it with a user study. In the study, we compared stroke mimicry to spray can, which was the most promising context-free projection. We designed two tasks for the study, a tracing task where a curve was shown to the participant and they had to trace it out, and a more realistic scenario, which we call the recreation task. In this task, they are shown the curve along with some key points on it. As soon as they start to draw, the curve disappears, but the key points stay visible. These points are chosen such that the task amounts to drawing the simplest smooth curve through the key points. 
We selected six shapes for the study, each having different features and characteristics, and participants drew 10 different curves on each. And then we measured the accuracy of the curves, their aesthetic quality, and the physical effort required to execute the curves. And we found a very clear answer for all three. Mimicry curves were more accurate, that is, they were more closely aligned with the target curve. They were aesthetically nicer, that is to say they had less high-frequency wiggly artifacts, and here's an example. And they required less physical effort as the users had to rotate their hand and head much less. For the formal definitions of our measurements, please see the paper. And we also asked the participants for their subjective opinions, and they echoed all these points. They felt they were more accurate, were drawing smoother curves, and had to use less physical effort with mimicry. Now, I wouldn't say the method is without limitations. This is the first exploration into drawing curves on surfaces in virtual reality, and obviously there are a bunch of limitations, but we hope and expect to see major improvements in the future. All right, so one of the limitations is that the projected curve has a tendency to lag behind the 3D stroke. This happens when the user deviates from mimicry or if the surface is very complex and they're not able to follow all nooks and crannies, which is a natural thing. Um, for long curves, we can have significant lag, which can be unintuitive for the user. One way to fix this lag would be to look at more history, not just the previous point. This could help fix problems which happen due to slight noise in the user's hand motion or slight deviations from mimicry. Another exciting area of future work is using machine learning techniques for customizing the projection to fit the user's preferences. We have released all the data collected in our study to help with this endeavor. Finally, application-dependent augmentations would be interesting to explore as well, such as encouraging snapping onto edges or corners, or for closing the current stroke, or similarly snapping onto existing strokes. In summary, we presented a novel method for drawing curves on surfaces and showed multiple applications which benefit from our technique. We have released the source code and a demo for this work, so please take a look. And finally, thank you all for your attention.